everyone. Welcome back to this live broadcast. Um, I've been going live with you guys on Facebook and YouTube. This is my third time this week, and I'm going to continue doing this weekly alongside Josh Ellsworth. I will be going live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Josh will be going live at, on Tuesday and Thursday at 11. And of course, my um, time slot is 9 a.m. Now, just keep in mind that might change uh, coming up. Of course, we will let you guys know in advance uh, just to make sure that we're reaching different time zones um, in a good time slot. So if that happens to change in the upcoming week, we will definitely let you know beforehand. Uh, we're just trying to gauge uh, what time is the best to be able to go live every day with you guys. So we're reaching you and uh, bringing you the content uh, that you guys are hoping to receive during this time. So if you guys could just comment in and let us know where you're joining from now um, and what time is best throughout the day that you would like to join these live broadcasts and um, be educated with all the different stuff. Hi, Carol, thanks for commenting. Um, and of course, if you guys happen to have any questions throughout the broadcast, as always, just comment those in. I can actually see all the comments coming in from Facebook and YouTube and answer any questions. All right, so today's topic, um, I wanted it to be a little bit about design elements and also print finishes because this is something uh, that we talk a, little, a lot about um, when it comes to heat printing with heat transfer vinyl or screen print transfers is how you can really take your designs to the next level so that they really pop off of the garment and stand out amongst um, some other competition. Uh, and it's really easy to do uh, if you do it right, because not only do you want to make sure that your design looks good and you're incorporating the right elements um, that make it uh, stand out, but you also don't want to be tied down in production, um, doing a lot of steps at the heat press in order to get that finish or that look that you're trying to achieve. So. Um, I'm going to be in CADWorks uh, for a portion of the live this morning. Hi, Carol, Tim, and Randy. Um, and we, um, so I'm going to show you how you can uh, add some levels to your products, or not your products, but your design, um, so that it takes it to the next level, but doesn't make it too complicated when it comes to actually producing that design with heat transfer vinyl. Uh, so one thing that we always talk about with heat transfer vinyl is um, how you um, can get really unique finishes and it's great for a certain amount of runs, um, but we always it, still want to think about how many colors are incorporated in that design. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and show you the um, design that we're actually going to be producing with the Cricut and um, the 9x12 craft press that I've been using. Um, and you can see here that we have a pattern element integrated into the design and then also a um, silver uh, color there, which is actually representing white for me since I'm working on a white background. Um, so this was just, it was really simple to build. I'm gonna show you how this was built. But the thing that I did here was making sure that it's a basic two-step process at the heat press. So not only does the design really stand out because it has different elements to it, but um, it's gonna be simple steps at the heat press. So when you're working with two colors, you want it to just be simple, two steps, and then be done. All right, so whenever, um, I was taking all that into consideration whenever I was considering this design because um, I wanted to obviously do a mixed media, uh, so you can see our patterns in there, and then um, I wanted just a basic solid effect as well. And I wanted to take just basic standard text, Bellevue Wildcats dance, and create a more of a design element as opposed to just text uh, basic on a shirt. Um, so what you add to your shirt is what's going to really sell that product. So keep that in mind whenever you're considering your designs. How can you make it different? How can you make it stand out to the customer so that they want to buy that piece? All right, so um, I'm just going to leave this up here as a reference as we're building uh, so I can show you exactly how this was done. All right, so first and most obvious is add text. So um, our first text is going to be Bellevue, and I'm going to select a font for that. For this, um, I just used one of the CADWorks fonts, right? And I don't even know how to pronounce this, so I'm not going to try to because I'll probably butcher it. 
Um, but this is the exact font that I utilized here. So you can see that showing up there. Uh, and then I created some spacing in there because I'm going to be doing some contouring um, in a couple different ways with this font. So I'm just going to put a point one zero character spacing in there to uh, break those apart a little bit. All right. And I'm going to duplicate that and add the text dance as well. All right. We're going to make that a little bit bigger. All right, and the next step is to add our um, third line of text. So we did Bellevue and dance. Now we want to add the mascot name, which is Wildcats in this instance. So um, in my font, so um, the first font I utilized directly from CADWorks Live fonts. For this one, I'm going to be utilizing one that I have imported. So. You, within CADWorks, you're also able to import your own designs. And for this font, I know it was on the last page um, for the font that I used here. Or no, sorry, it wasn't on the last page. It's called Eloise. So I'm going to type in ELO and find it there. Okay, there it is. All right, so there is a little search bar um, if you guys are trying to find uh, what font you want to use. Um, this isn't the exact same, uh, but that's okay. I'm not going to waste time going through all those fonts. Um, but just keep in mind, you are able to um, import your own designs and utilize it that way. All right, so I'm going to make space for this. All right, and I'm going to add an effect to it so that it slants a little bit. All right, so that's one thing that I really like about CADWorks is it's good about adding um, basic design elements quickly so that you don't have to spend a lot of time on um, changing those yourself. All right, so all I did was add an effect directly from um, the CADWorks envelopes or different um, effects that it offers. All right, and now I'm just going to center this and make sure everything is lining up. And I see some other people coming in. Tim recommended 1 p.m. So earlier, if you guys weren't on the live broadcast, um, I asked whether or not uh, you guys like the 9 a.m. slot or if you think it should be at a different time. So if you guys um, think it should be at a different time, feel free to comment that in and suggest. Karen likes 9 a.m., so we are getting some mixed feedback. Um, hi, Barbara. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. All right. Okay, so we do have a team joining us today, uh, show, let, providing links and everything. So if you see them commenting throughout, they're letting you know what products we're using throughout the broadcast and um, all the different um, resources that we're utilizing as well. All right, so the next step to this design is to add all of the different elements. So we have our basic text here. Um, and now all I have to do is create my contours and some other pieces of clip art and design elements that we utilize, such as um, this block here and these lines um, across from the Wildcats. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is all of my contouring. All right, so for Bellevue, all I have to do is add a small contour here, and that is an effect that automatically applies. All right, so I can select Bellevue, it will automatically do an offset of 0 0.10. Um, if I'm happy with that, good to go. If not, I have the ability to change this. Now, I do like the thickness of the contour this allows because it gives me enough space or enough room, if you will, for air at the heat press. Um, if I do too small of a contour there, I could have some alignment issues um, whenever I'm trying to place my second layer on top of my base layer. So keeping that fairly um, dense there so that you have enough room to work with whenever you are layering designs. Hi, Patrice, thanks for joining. All right, so this is usually walk time for Bella. All right, hi, Kevin, thanks for joining. All right, so I'm getting some um, mixed feedback on times, but we will definitely figure out a decent time that will hit not only East Coast, but West Coast as well. All right, so once I add that contour, that will apply for me there. I'm going to make this just a bit bigger. Um, and 
before I do my combined contour for dance, um, what I'm going to do is create this block and punch these letters through. All right. So the effect that we're creating here. So whatever color that your garment is applying to, you can actually make that as part of your design, which is what we did here in this case of the dance text. Um, so if I were to change this to the color of garment that we're applying to later, then it would show that this would pop through creating essentially a different color by just using that garment. All right. So keep that in mind in your design elements, creating open text um, and everything like that. Not only it gives your garment more breathability, but it allows the garment to add more color to your design. So it looks as though you're doing more than a two color design. So um, the next step I'm going to do is import that um, block here that we're punching the word dance through. So I'm just going to go to my clip art and go to the search bar and type in line. All right. This brings me up a bunch of horizontal um, options. What I utilized for this was just this one. All right. So just imports a basic um, piece in there for me. And now I'm going to size this so that it fits the dance um, text best. All right. So right now my height of this is um, 3.95. So I'm going to make this 4.2. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit bigger and make it 4.45. All right, and I'm also going to change the color of this and send it to the back by just right clicking and then selecting to back. And then I'm going to bring it in a little bit. So what I'm actually doing is not totally matching um, the width of dance, but the width of Bellevue. So what I want to do here is select Bellevue and see what my width is there, right? So we're looking at 13.38, right? So that's exactly where I'm going to um, make the width of this as well. So to be able to adjust my width and height separately so that it doesn't automatically change it, um, the dimensions for both the height and width, I can unlock my toggle. All right, so I just click that little button and now I can change this. Right. Oh wait, no, it was 38, not 83. Right. So let's, that's it. All right, so now all I have to do is make sure this is all centered in exactly middle of that clip art. So I'm going to select both and then go to shaping and, or align and then hit center middle, all right? So it's going to align that perfectly for me. Now I'm gonna to go to the shaping section and do back minus front, which is going to directly take that text and punch it through that clip art, all right? So if I move this, you can see that that is now open. All right, now I'm gonna create that combined contour so that we have an outline around those, that punched out text, so. I'm going to select my font here and hit add effect. For this one, I'm going to create a uh, combined contour. So you can see this option here takes the text, creates a contour line and completely removes the inside of those um, letters. All right, and I'm going to increase the thickness of the contour again, because we want this to be as easy as possible from the production standpoint. Um, so I'm considering weeding at this point. Uh, patterns uh, does not have a tacky backing, so I wanna make sure there's enough thickness there um, that if it gets to be too fine a detail, it should be fine. So um, I'm gonna go with 0.10 as the offset, and then that's going to apply there. So you can't really see it because anytime you do a contour, that contour um, is set to automatically just be a gray color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to red for the time being so that we can see that. All right, so I actually have to go into contour, select fill, and then select the red I wanna use. All right, and now that's showing up how I wanna do. Now to change the um, color for this, all I have to do is double click and then hit the text color and it's gonna show me my fill is black and I can just change that to the same red. 
All right. Now, um, we are also creating a mock-up as well. So what we wanna do here is um, make sure that it is showing accurately the fill of the pattern that we're going to be using. All right, so when it comes to patterns, uh, there's a lot of different um, ways that you can utilize them. In this case, we selected a, a red uh, tie-dye, which is what you're seeing up here, uh, as the pattern and how we were able to get that fill from the stalls website we were just able to go in and screenshot that particular pattern and import it as a fill so i'm going to show you how that step is done uh, so that you can see how uh, that works all right so um, i'm at my pattern heat transfer vinyl on the stalls website and the particular pattern that we selected uh, for the red tie-dye is in our spectra collection all right, so we have a few different collections that you can choose from, uh, real tree patterns, um, our custom patterns that you can actually go in and select the colors that you want. And then we have spectra patterns. Um, and these are ones that we just offer really popular co color combinations for. So you can see here that we do the standard colors that are typically in a tie dye pattern. Um, and then we offer all the different uh, popular colors that this comes in as well. So for this particular one, we did choose red, all right? So you can see that here, I already have it sheeted down um, to be able to cut out on the Cricut because I do wanna show you how easy it is to utilize patterns. Um, and the reason I like to show this is because it is a different step from your, or a, a, a couple of different steps from your standard um, cutting process and um, weeding process than uh, your standard heat transfer vinyl. We're actually not mirroring a design and we have to use a masking in order to get the pattern away from the backing in order to heat apply it. All right. All right, seeing everybody else commenting in. Hi, D, Aaron, and Julian. All right, love being able to learn with you all before my day really gets going and I get busy. All right, good point, that is a good point. All right, so um, back to CAD works. In, in order to create that fill, all I did was um, brought up my snipping tool from my camera and or from my computer and um, just took a screenshot of that particular pattern. And then I just saved it as a file in my pictures so that I could then fill it, all right? So if you've been in any of um, the lives that Josh has been doing, he has been showing a lot of uh, different things that you can do in CAD works. And he definitely showed yesterday how you can do a gradient and the really unique effect that that can bring to showing logos to your customers. Uh, but you can also use a fill in order to create a texture or a finish that you know you'll be using on the shirt that you wanna represent to your customer before you produce it, All right? So that texture is uh, really simple and it actually shows up in all the different imports um, that you've added, but basically all you have to do is go to texture and import, and then you can browse all of your different files to find that fill. All right, so in this case, it's that pattern. You can see that I used a foil red color there so that it shows as a metallic finish throughout a design. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of different um, fills that you can utilize. All right, so I'm happy with the auto size um, for how this pattern is gonna be shown throughout my design. However, if I ever needed to scale this to make it a little closer to the pattern, because I know that that pattern is gonna show up a lot larger than how it's being represented through auto size, then I can scale that to fit the design a little bit better. All right, so if I'm happy with that, I'll just pay and it will go in and fill that text for me. All right, and then I can do the same exact thing with my dance text as well, All right? So this contour, we would select because that's the red, and then we'll go to that fill and select that same pattern, All right? So I can increase the scale there or just use auto size, whatever your preference is. And then that will show what the pattern is going to look throughout the design. All right, so um, the last piece is to add these little dashes here that are just kind of completing the design and um, just making everything look even and level throughout. So um, all I did here, again, that same horizontal line that I used earlier, I imported that and adjusted um, the width of it by just 
getting this side of it and scrolling it over. And then I duplicated that. And now to make sure these are even, I'm gonna hit control and select the other one and then hit align middle, All right? So that's gonna make sure they're a level across the board. And now I'm going to go to shaping and hit condense so that they read as one clip art together as opposed to separate. And now I can go ahead and adjust this how I need to. All right, and then all I have to do is hit align center and change this to whatever color I need it to be. I'm gonna scroll this in so that it's not touching that line so much. All right, and that was the basics of just creating a simple design and kind of just taking it to the next level. So consider all the different design elements um, that you have available to you to utilize. Um, in this case, we just did a basic clip art punched through some text and created some contour so that it took a basic text design and took it to the next level completely. We incorporated another color, in this case being a mixed media, which we'll be using patterns. Um, and then we're gonna pair it with fashion film as well. All right, so I already have this exact design loaded up in Cricut Design Space, so I don't, you guys don't have to see me um, go through those steps again. If you're not familiar with how to um, import a design from CADWorks into Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio, uh, we've been showing it for um, the past week. So just revisit one of those lives there on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page in the video section. Uh, so if you wanna know how what that exact step looks like, you can check that out there. All right, so I'm going to get my Cricut connected here by plugging in the USB. Um, Karen asks, what is the duplicate command on a Mac in CADWorks? So I just hit command D whenever I'm working with my MacBook in CADWorks, right? As opposed to using the control button. All right. So it needs to read my cutter there. I'm going to hit the refresh so that it can find my Cricut. All right, so as that's working to find that, it's taking a little bit, maybe my internet's running slow. All right, so um, whenever you're working with patterns, there are three different types of patterns that we offer. All right, and I'm going to hide my screen here. Okay, uh, so three different types of patterns that we offer. Um, there's a lot of different uh, patterns that you can utilize uh, to add your own colors and whatnot, but there's three different finishes. Okay, so there is a basic matte finish, um, which is what you're seeing here. We do a glitter pattern and then we do sign vinyl pattern as well. All right, so anytime um, that you're working with patterns, just know that you can do it in three different uh, finishes. One common uh, thing that customers are doing just to kind of upsell or uh, be able to pair different products with the same pattern is they'll do um, whatever heat transfer uh, type of pattern, whether that be glitter or this matte finish, they will get a sign vinyl to match that and put it on a hard good and sell those items together, whether that be uh, a t-shirt and a water bottle or a mug or something like that. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you could actually get the same pattern um, design in two different finishes and utilize them together for upselling. So keep that in mind. Um, the pattern that we're working with today, since it is the matte finish, we will be using medium tack magic mask. So anytime you're working with patterns, know that there needs to be a mask that goes with it. If you're working with patterns a lot and you don't wanna have to buy them together each time, just buy a large roll of the magic mask and keep it in stock and in your inventory and then just buy one yard, five yard, 10 yard cuts of, um, or rolls of the pattern. That way you just have the masking there ready to go and you can just order your patterns as an as needed basis. All right, so it looks like everything is set up for Cricut. So I'm gonna bring that screen back up. All right, and it says, make sure mirror is turned on and iron on material is faced shiny side down. 
All right, so as I hover over my Bellevue dance here, I wanna make sure for patterns that I'm actually not mirroring. Uh, whenever I cut out my fashion film, which I already did so that you guys didn't have to see that process again, um, I did mirror that one. So you can see that represented there. Whenever you're working with patterns, you do not want to mirror. I cannot stress that enough because when you're used to working with heat transfer vinyl, um, you're constantly just mirroring everything. You get in the habit of doing that. With this, you'll want to keep it in the positive image. All right, so um, this is all set to go. What I'm going to do is get this set up on my uh, cutting mat. I'm just going to smooth that down by running my hand over it so that it's secure to the mat. And now I can just load this in. All right, so it shows me that everything's loaded. Now all I have to do is hit the go button, which is just the uh, flashing cricket uh, button on there. So it's gonna cut that out for me. Um, again, I mentioned this on Monday or Wednesday that I love that it shows where we're at in the process of uh, cutting this and how much time we have. Um, so we're only at 8%, so we will hop back over to the screen while that is uh, cutting the rest of that out and we can lead our fashion film. All right, so anytime I'm cutting fashion film out on the Cricut, um, I just use that basic iron-on setting. For those of you that joined me on Monday um, and the weeding problems that I was actually having with the flock, was because my pressure settings got messed up somehow. Um, I'm not sure how I didn't change out the blade um, to cause it to cut deeper than it needed to be. Um, but I was overcompensating actually for the pressure. So I went with something really, really light um, that would just hardly cut through uh, the flock. So um we i ended up getting in touch with cricket to figure out what was going on um and their preset cutting specs uh you can actually go in and change and because i don't use cricket a ton uh day to day i didn't know that you could do that so i ended up just going in and changing out those um pressure settings and now all of my heat transfer vinyl is cutting out fine but it's still a mystery to me how the pressure got changed. And I'm curious as if that has happened to anybody else. All right, so fashion film, I'm um, done weeding out. So you can see you can get um, really great results with fashion film. Um, I'm able to get some decent intricacy. Uh, this is really just scratching the surface of all of the fine detail that you can really get with fashion film. Um, but yeah. That's the basics of um, fashion film. It has a really nice matte finish, and I really like pairing it with patterns because it's a great um, contrast with those with that product. All right, butterscotch jelly beans. Thanks for making instructional videos with voice. There are a lot of videos with music playing and just visuals. Ah, all right, awesome. Thank you. Right, and uh, Patrice, I love that you have three finishes. Customers love having different products with same pattern. Bundles are a great upsell, and this makes it super easy. Thank you, Patrice. All right, so that is all done cutting out. So I can remove this from my um, cutting mat. Now I will say patterns can be a bit of a pain to remove from this. But don't be afraid to just like pull with all of your might. It's the backing of the material that really wants to hold on to that cutting mat. Um, but it does come off if you uh, pull a good bit. So, all right. Now we can weed the masking, or not the masking, the patterns. I'm just trying to find my cut line here. I always get comments um, from customers that say that it's hard to find cut lines in some of our products. Um, I agree. It's just kind of shifting it so that the light will hit it just right. All right. So we can go ahead and weed this one out now too. 
and patterns is extremely easy to weed earlier i mentioned that it does not have a tacky backing um just more of kind of like a static cling type deal all right so now we just have to go in and take out the rest of these cavities and we will be good to go All right. Oh, almost forgot the cavities inside the bee. All right. So now I have my masking and all I need to make sure uh, to apply my masking to this is that I have something with a hard edge. I forgot my um, squeegee at the office, so I'm gonna use my sheets card. And you can use whatever card that you have as long as it has a nice hard edge to it so that you can get all of those edges of the design transferred over to your masking. All right, so I'm going to start from the center out and push with a decent amount of pressure, making sure that I'm getting along all of those edges and pushing out any air bubbles that could possibly be getting in the mask. The amount of time that you spend in this process, the easier it is to get the backing um, to peel away and leave the heat transfer vinyl where it needs to be. All right, so I can go ahead, I'm gonna flip this over and remove the original carrier from the masking as opposed to the masking from the carrier. Um, this I found to be the most successful way to do it, um, but it's whatever your preference is. And I do have one more cavity that I forgot to remove, which is inside that A. It's super small, I could barely see it in the pattern. Um, so that's one thing that you can do as well, is do a reverse weed. All right, so if I wanted to, I could have left all of the cavities inside my letters there and picked them out after I uh, transferred the heat transfer vinyl over. All right, so we're gonna secure that uh, by putting the backing that was originally on the masking behind our design so nothing gets ruined there. And now we can go to our heat application step. All right, so I'm gonna prop my screen up here, make sure you can see my press. The garment that we're gonna be heat applying for this project is, oh, we might not be heat applying today, folks. I left my mode on temperature, so this never actually heated up, I apologize. Uh, so the product that we were going to be heat applying today was a Cavio blank garment. Um, I'll just kind of walk you through the steps so you can see how this would be applied. Um, again, this is a 100% cotton garment, and um, all we would have to do at this point is just tack the fashion film down, all right? So this would be our first layer. And this is uh, just a tacking method. So anytime you're working with fashion film, um, if you didn't catch the, the past um, lives that we did, all you have to do is tack that for three to five seconds. That keeps the production really quick, especially if you're working with mixed media or multicolored designs. Um, and then the patterns, we would layer that right on top and heat apply for the full application, which would then secure um, the quality of the product um, by giving that full time temperature and pressure without compromising um, the finish or the durability of it. All right, so fashion film, um, great product to pair with our mat. Um, smooth patterns and um, anytime you're working with patterns just make sure you are doing a contrasting color with it because it allows them to really pop off the garment you can see um, as i lay this on top of my garment if i were to just do bellevue dance here on this red garment it would definitely just kind of fade into the garment uh, not just because it is the same color um but because it is um, patterned throughout and the more detail a pattern has, the more it can get lost in the garment. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so I do see some other questions coming in. So we'll go ahead and check those out. All right, so 
Ricky, I only trust fashion film. Fashion film is a good product. It's typically my go-to unless I'm working with something that is heat sensitive and in um, a case where I would need something low temp. So I would always go with premium plus for a 280 degrees. Um, Patrice said, I've done that before and thought my press was broke. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. If you don't uh, change the mode and you just leave it on there, it will never actually start heating up to the temperature you set it to. So I forgot to click that button one more time so that I would heat up. Uh, Karen asked, do you have an approximate total cost of what this design would be? So that's a really great question. Uh, we do have a resource for that, and that's actually known as the cost calculator, uh, which I can actually bring up for you and show you what that looks like. Um, so it's really simple to actually price out our products. We've made it very simple. Um, and I'm gonna bring this up on my screen to show you. All right, so uh, as you can see here, um, we're in an Excel file. So this is a free download uh, that we offer right on the stall's website. And there is actually an updated one now that has the more accurate pricing. Um, I brought up the old one by accident, but still same concept. Um, you'll be able to enter in all of your shop's overhead and any labor charges that you want to include in the price overall so that you can best price everything out for your cost to produce. Um, it allows you to uh, enter how many uh, cut designs per garment. So in this case, we had two cut designs, one in fashion film and one in patterns. Um, our average time to weed and mask. So we did weed and mask. Um, I weeded out the fashion film um, in under a minute. The patterns was under a minute. Masking was under a minute. Uh, in combination and all of those, I would probably maybe do a minute and a half just to be safe. Um, and then our average time to heat press, um, that would be under a minute. So I'm just going to put a minute there as the standard. Uh, you guys know best what your lab labor looks like. So fill this out how you think that you would be spending the uh, accurate amount of time here. Um, and then you can also include the cost of your blank. Uh, so if you want this to calculate your overall cost to produce from your labor, overhead, and material costs, uh, you can also enter in that here. This was sourced from Garmi uh, Cavio, um, so I'm not sure exactly uh, what the price is here. So we're just going to leave that out for now. Um, and then we'll just price for one job. Um, the width of our design was roughly eight inches. Actually, we can go to Cricut and look at the exact dimensions. All right, so we're looking at roughly nine and a quarter by seven. Or the fashion film. All right. And then for the patterns, we were looking at about nine and a quarter by five and a quarter. All right. So, um, You'll type in your um, width and length for both materials that you use, and then it will start to calculate um, that material cost. So we have our fashion film cost listed here. This is including your waste, so keep that in mind. And then it breaks down the rest of your cost to produce based off of the labor um, number that you put in there and your overhead percentage as well. All right, so the fashion film um, was 233 overall and our patterns, um, which would essentially be our express print was 354 because that is including the masking in there as well. Now, again, we do have an updated um, calculator that has the updated pricings with our material and all of the new materials that we've recently added on. So just keep that in mind. Um, we did share a link here so you can see the cost calculator link if you guys are interested in downloading that. You just have to fill out a quick questionnaire. Um, it's free, and then you have access to just filling all this out to be able to uh, calculate everything. All right. I'm just going to check for the heck of it to see if the heat press actually heated up and you guys can see the application. All right, we're still at 235, and I needed to be at 325. So I'm not going to make you guys sit and wait with me. Um, I will go ahead and heat apply this uh, once this is all said and done and share the finish of this product 
on um, our Facebook group, Heat Press for Profit. So if you're not a part of the Facebook group, we're always in there interacting um, and just giving each other tips and tricks, answering any questions you guys may have. It's a really great community. So I, I encourage you guys to um, go and join that Facebook group. Um, and that's where this finished design will be. Um, check the comments before we head off real quick. Good morning, Jennifer from Alaska. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Ricky said he always forgot to include labor. Yeah, make sure you guys are paying yourself for the work that you're doing. And Patrice says the calculator is to the rescue. Yeah, this calculator has saved me a lot on my cost to produce when I have to try to tell people roughly what they're looking at for different designs that we show in our education. So uh, this is always my go-to. All right, well, thank you guys so much uh, for joining me this morning. I will see you next week. On Monday, we are going to be doing a uh, really fun project with sublimation. All right, so stay tuned for that, um, and we'll see you.